So there was a case that came through out of California that I think is definitely more important than all the culture war nonsense that's being discussed right now. In California, a long-standing ban on assault weapons was struck down. That actually affects our lives. Welcome to Escaping the Echo Chamber. So, a lot of you may not have heard about this because there's all sorts of ridiculous distractions being focused on in the media, but I think it's a, an important case to focus on because one, it was only at the district level and the government said they're appealing. So let me give you the, the skinny. The, the, there's a judge, federal judge, U.S. District Court judge that struck down, Judge Benitez, struck down um, California's assault weapons ban that's been in place since the 80s. He says, um, in fact, he, he, he talk, talks about the AR-15. And it, now, if you, you remember the AR-15, if you think about the AR-15, if you've heard about the AR-15, it's what the uh, media likes to call an assault weapon. And they, it's not just the media, you know, um, politicians will call it assault weapon. And like, there's like no actual definition for an assault weapon. It's a rifle. It's a rifle. That's what the AR-15 is. It's a rifle. But they create the impression, like they're using this word assault rifle to create the impression of an automatic weapon, which the AR-15 is not, <laughs> you know. So they're, they're creating the impression that people can, and you'll see this on social media, in, in discussions with individuals who are who are supporting gun control, they'll be talking about AR-15s and like, oh, you could just pull the trigger and fire a hundred rounds in, in in a second, and it's like, no, that's not what that's not what an AR-15 is. It's semi-automatic rifle. Um, stop it. And but these are the kinds of images, the imagery that they want to put in people's heads because it's propaganda. That's what the media does. The media is a proper uh, propaganda arm for the government. So you have your right-leaning propaganda arm, you have your left-leaning propaganda arm. And your left-leaning propaganda arm is trying to push certain policies that the left wants. Now, the right-leaning propaganda arm will try to push certain policies that the right-leaning politicians and, and wing of the government wants. Ultimately, they all want to infringe on our freedom. That's what we need to be paying attention to. There are a handful, potentially, of, you know, politicians that are actually in office that will stand up against this. But you got to realize if they're actually standing up against, you know, infringement on our, on our freedoms, on liberty, the the parties, the the rest of the, the, the apparatus will descend upon them and say, you got to go push them out, primary them or whatever. But the AR-15 um, was at at was one of the main topics. And Judge Benitez talks about how the AR-15, um, he actually, he, he uses an analogy to a Swiss Army knife. Whether or not I, <laughs> whether or not I, I understand or even uh, agree with the analogy, hey, it, it's, it's, a, it's a tool of self-defense. It's a firearm. It, it's, it's a weapon. And that's what the Second Amendment is supposed to protect. The right of the people to bear arms. Not just certain arms, not just the arms we like, not just the arms that we feel um, at any given moment are appropriate, because make no mistake about it, the proponents of gun control will talk about, hey, hey, this is crazy. We just want common sense gun control. Define common sense. Define common sense. And so once you define common sense, they'll say, oh, something reasonable. Okay. Is that static? <laughs> because at one point, common sense gun control meant um, no automatic weapons. Okay. Then it meant common sense gun control meant, oh, no extended um, clips and magazines, no extended magazines. Um, okay. Then, uh, I think it was last year or the year before, they decided that common sense gun control meant uh, that anybody under the age of 21 shouldn't own a firearm. Like, all this, see how this keeps... It keeps creeping. The, the definition keeps expanding because common sense gun control, common sense, saying common sense laws doesn't actually mean anything. It means whatever they want it to mean at whatever time. So at today, common sense could mean, OK, we want to get rid of AR-15s. Tomorrow, it, common sense could mean, oh, well, there's still shootings. We need to get rid of, of handguns. And then eventually common sense gun control could mean, you know what? People shouldn't have shotguns either. So. Like, that's why it's it's not just disingenuous, it's a flat-out lie when people are talking about common-sense gun control because it means anything and everything that people want it to mean. 
it, 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 it's a definition that has that is so vague and overbroad that it has no confine. No, there, there, there are no confines of its limits. There are no limits to common sense gun control. However, guess what? There are limits to the go government's power and the government's ability to, to infringe on people's rights. The Second Amendment sets those limits. The right of the people to bear arms shall not be infringed. Like, that's, that's what it says. So all of, this, all of these other exercises in, in um, rhetoric and propaganda are designed to undermine the Second Amendment. Among, in, like in this case, the Second Amendment. They try, the government will consistently try to undermine all of uh, our rights, but right now specifically speaking about the Second Amendment, and that's what they're doing. That's what they will continually try to do. So if you're like, okay, well, AR-15s are, that's just the, the latest step before they go to the next step. But one of the good things to realize is AR-15s have actually saved lives. And this is what they don't want to talk about. In fact, do you remember the name Stephen Williford? Stephen Williford was uh, a gentleman in Texas where there was a church shooting where 26 people were killed. He heard the shooting, came from his house with his AR-15, saw the shooter coming out of the church and shot the shooter a couple of times. Shooter got in the vehicle, tried to drive off. He got in, into a car with somebody else. They pursued the shooter, managed to get him off the road, and the shooter was, was dead. Um, I think the shooter may have taken his own life before he got up to the vehicle. But this is the point. They will talk about the AR-15. In fact, even in that story, if you go to CNN's website, um, I believe it was CNN, they talk about that shooting, and then they talk about uh, how AR-15s are often used in, in shootings. <laughs> Wait a minute. So you're talking about the, shoot, the, the, the shooter's gun, but you're not talking about how the guy stopped him. You're not talking about the gun of the person that stopped the shooter. That's interesting. That's almost like propaganda. It's exactly propaganda. That's what they do. But um, there have been other cases where people have used AR-15s for home defense. And that's something I think that really needs to be focused on. Because right now the narrative being, uh, the, the narrative surrounding guns are that people will talk about guns when uh, somebody gets hurt, when, when, when somebody gets killed by a criminal, by somebody doing something wrong. What they won't talk about guns is when somebody is protected by a gun against somebody doing wrong, against the criminal, against somebody committing violence and aggression against another person. They won't talk about that. They won't talk about people who protect themselves, protect their families with guns. They don't want to talk about that because that changes the narrative. That's what proponents of the Second Amendment, that's what proponents of all of our rights, all of our civil liberties need to be, uh, and, and human rights, all of our human rights need to be focused on. Because that's how we change. The, that's how we we change the tide and this 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 creep of of you know of, of further infringement on our rights by government. If we remember and and don't let anybody else forget. Wait a minute. You want to give you want to tell me a story about somebody using guns to kill people to kill innocent people, and I want to tell you a story about somebody using a gun to protect innocent people. This is a this is a war worth fighting. Because it's not a culture war. It's a war for our rights. It's a war against government because government is at, is at war against our freedoms. And, and it will constantly be. Especially if you take a look at the quality of the people that are in office. They will consistently and constantly try to infringe on our rights. We have to fight back against that. We need to stop being distracted with frivolous nonsense. And focus on the issues that actually are affecting our lives. Whereas... This culture stuff, that's stuff we can work out with each other. We can discuss, we can argue, we can debate. But if we need policy, if we need things to change in the government, we need to be focused on restraining the government to its confines. And that's what the Constitution is, is doing, especially the Bill of Rights, of creating a barrier of, of and, and a confinement of what government is allowed to do. That's what we need to be focused on. As always, if you like my content, if you like what I'm talking about, be sure to give me a thumbs up, like, share, subscribe, um, comment below if you, if you agree. If you disagree, go ahead and comment below and feel free to give me a thumbs down. But like I always say, if you're going to give me a thumbs down, don't just give me a thumbs down and run away. Give me a thumbs down and comment why and I will address it either in the comment section or in a future video. I'll see you next time.